Good afternoon. I am so delighted that you're taking a little bit of time to join us today. We are going to talk exclusively um, for a short period about the BAMD program at the George Washington University. We're not going to be talking about the other special programs today. There are other events to do that. But because the application is very unique and we're looking for a unique type of student for this accelerated program, um, we thought it was important to give you a chance to hear a little bit more about the application process. And um, we will be answering your questions um, throughout the session. Uh, my name is Lee Stork. I'm a regional director of admission at the George Washington University. I'm actually located in Albuquerque, New Mexico and have been having a little bit of internet trouble today, but we hope it'll hold on uh, for the next hour or 45 minutes so that we can do this program seamlessly. Um, I cover all of the Southwest and Southern California. I also happen to be the coordinator in the undergraduate admission office of the BAMD program, but that does not mean you have to address all your BAMD questions to me. Everyone on our staff has this phenomenal program. Um, we have joining us um, off camera, well, off camera today, one of my colleagues, Caitlin Kreps. She's a regional direct, she's a regional um, admission officer as well. Um, she's located in Texas and um, I believe co covers Texas, Oklahoma, some parts of California and Colorado. She'll be answering your questions. So feel free to ask questions both about our uh, BAMD application, but also about GW in general. Also, we're really excited that joining us is uh, Yusuf Bade, who um, has finished his BA and will be enrolling in the MD program at GW. So he can answer some questions from the uh, student perspective. So thank you again so much for coming. Uh, there are more general ways to learn about GW, and I'm sure Caitlin will be sharing to you with our Journey to GW page, but I'm expecting you're already familiar with that because that's how you found out about this program. So this is, uh, to be very clear, year accelerated program um, that offers a few uniquely qualified and advanced students um, a provisional acceptance into our uh, George Washington University Medical School um, when they come as undergraduates. Um, this is a very unique program. The first thing I want to emphasize is that the George Washington University is a great place to be pre-med, and this is only one path, an express lane uh, to enter medical school. Um, we really want all the pre-med students who consider this program to also consider GW in general, because um, while this is a great kind of a golden ticket express lane opportunity to medical school, um, it is for a, a very select group of students. And if you want, if you've decided you want to be a doctor and you to pursue, you will find a way. And uh, this is just one route. So let's talk a little bit more about the program. Um, <clears throat> and there are some key things here that relate to how you apply to the program. This program offers you the opportunity to earn a BA degree at GW in just three years. In order to accomplish that, we only consider students who are in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. You'll get lots of help to create that three-year plan. Um, and uh, there is flexibility in your choice of academic major. But we need to also make sure that the exceptional students we admitted to the program as first years can, uh, maintain their um, academic excellence throughout their time at GW. So you'll be asked to maintain a 3.6 cumulative GPA um, if you're um, accepted into the program. And we expect to see good, particularly good grades in those science courses. Um, there is no MCAT required to remain in the program. In fact, you are not allowed to take the MCAT. However, you must take a practice MCAT exam so that our medical um, school knows that you're on the right track. Keep in mind, if you accept admission to this program, it means you're accepting that you will go on to the George Washington University Medical School. 
Um, it will also be expected that outside of class, you're a, a, a participant in our community, that you're taking advantage of medically related and service experiences that are uh, numerous around our campus and in our community in Washington, DC. And you're gonna be getting a lot of guidance from the, uh, the Dean of Admissions to the medical school and their staff. Um, you'll be evaluated annually on your progress and then you are able to direct, um, directly enter the MD program in the fourth year of your studies at GW. So the application. There are some really key factors that are unique to this application at GW. Uh, the first is that we have a very strict deadline that is November 15th. Um, there are many things listed here, but a couple things also worth reminding you about. Again, you must apply to a major in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. Um, you must be either a citizen of the US or, Can or Canada or a permanent resident of the United States. This is not a program, sadly, that is open to um, student international students unless they are Canadian citizens. So it's really important to understand that up front. Our deadline is pretty strict because we need to re we typically review the BAMD applicants um, very early in our reading process. Um, <clears throat> and so please don't ask us for extensions. Um, to apply to the BAMD at GW, you of course need to complete the common application, including um, the essay and all your activities. Um, please fill in the application. Don't just say see resume attached. Um, you need to fill out the application. When you say you're going to apply to BAMD, it will generate an additional essay um, to be completed in the GW supplement. It's a short essay. But also keep in mind that we have a GW supplementary essay that is not exclusively for BAMD. And it would be very helpful for you to write both of those essays because they address some different issues about coming to GW and coming to our campus. Let me share with you that one of the things we're looking for in these applicants is that you're a student who really embraces the GW educational experience and being part of a community in our nation's capital in Washington, DC. Um, that is so essential to what we do at GW. And so we're not only looking for some of the top students academically that have some of the top scores and incredible experiences in high school, we're also looking for students who truly embrace the education that GW has to offer and doesn't just see this as an easy path um, because we really want students who are gonna be involved in our community all of the years they're at GW. Um, you will have to, of course, ask your high school to send us a copy of your official high school transcript. Typically that means final junior grades um, and they submit a secondary school report. We ask for two letters of recommendation, one from your um, college counselor and one from a teacher. Many BAMD students will want to submit additional letters of recommendation, and we do accept those, but please don't inundate us with 20 uh, recommendations telling us that you're a nice uh, young man or woman. Um, if there is a supplemental letter of recommendation that can speak specifically to perhaps some scientific research you've been involved in or volunteer work in the medical community, that of course is welcome. Okay, this is something essential for to be considered to be admitted to the BAMD in this year. You must submit an ACT or an SAT score to the George Washington University. Please take note of what the slide says. Some students erroneously submit it to the medical school. That is not correct. You are applying to be an undergraduate at George Washington University in this program. So you send the scores directly to us. Um, there is no SAT subject test requirement because those tests have been eliminated. So you may have taken that earlier, but that is not a requirement. 
Um, please note, this is different than the situation was last year. And that's why it's, I'm so glad that you folks um, were proactive and came to this event. You may find that there are some books and websites that say we are test optional for BAMD. That was a one year exception only due to the pandemic. It's really essential that you submit your test scores before the deadline, if possible. <clears throat> we typically get a large number of applications for this program. Um, it is a very tough review. Most of the students that apply to this program have near perfect academic records and near perfect test scores. There are some things that um, distinguish the, the few students that we invite to interview. Uh, one, of course, is that we get the sense that you are fully committed to being a doctor. Secondly, that you've had some experience in the medical profession, um, hopefully working directly with patients. And I know that it's been a trying time during the pandemic, but um, we hope you'll take advantage of any opportunity you have to get to a, a deeper understanding of the medical profession. Um, and uh, so <clears throat> those kinds of activities will stand out to us on your resume, as will that ex extra essay that you write about why you want to do this program and why you want to be at GW for it. Um, once we've reviewed all the candidates, um, we cut down the numbers drastically, and then we refer um, a select number to the medical school, and they make the decisions on the students who are going to be semifinalists who will be invited to interview with faculty from the medical school, typically in February. Um, we are not yet um, sure whether this will be an in-person interview as it was in the past or whether it will be a virtual interview as we did last year. So you'll be clearly notified uh, if you are um, invited for an interview. Um, after you interview, you do not find out about your status for BAMD until the regular decisions are out for GW in total. And that typically happens mid to late March. Um, it is uh, really important, and I would encourage you to do this before you even apply, that you decide if this is something you really want to do. This, this program is not meant for an average student or even a typical student with an exceptional record. It's really meant for someone who has already decided they want to be a doctor. And typically, they're students who have accelerated in high school um, and bring in a great deal of AP or IB credit with them, um, which can help them uh, because we'll give credit at GW for uh, AP exams with scores of four or five, or IB higher level exams with scores six or seven. And those credits are part of what help you accelerate um, through your BA program in three years. Keep in mind, it's a BAMD program, not a BSMD program. That's one of my little pet peeves. If somebody contacts me and asks me about our BSMD program, I say, you're talking to the wrong school because that's not the program we have. So keep that in mind. This is uh, both provides provisional acceptance into medical school, but it also accelerates you through your undergraduate years. And there's some really fine applicants for whom that's not the right choice because they do want a full four-year experience. So, um, and uh, again, Deadline is November 15th. Test scores are required. You must apply, or apply to a major in the Columbian College um, and have your test scores and all your materials submitted by November 15th. Okay, I, um, I want to uh, make sure that I've covered everything. Um, Lee, I have some questions for you if you're ready to answer. I, I'm, I'm happy to take some, Caitlin, thanks. 
Yeah. So um, one of our first questions that you kind of touched on a little bit, but maybe you can expand upon is, um, can you major in any subject within Columbian College and participate in the BAMD program? Uh, that is my understanding, yes. Um, the key is that whatever major you select, you have to be sure that you have completed all of your pre-med requirements and the requirements for that major within three years. But that's one of the benefits of this, is it provides some flexibility. So not everybody has to major in biology or chemistry, but many of them do end up doing that as well. One of the great opportunities at GW is we also have a lot of terrific minor programs. And so some students will combine a very interesting minor that may have nothing to do uh, with medicine. Um, maybe learning a, another language as a minor. So there are other ways that um, you can incorporate all of the things that uh, GW has to offer to take advantage of uh, in your undergraduate years. One of the other things that I didn't mention, um, but want to make sure that you understand, at GW, we embrace the concept of service. I think that is very true of the GW Medical School. And so we're also looking for students who've been committed to service. And sometimes they're doing service as part of their preparation to be a doctor, and that's okay. But any type of community service you've been able to do, again, we know we've been living in a pandemic, you know, so we know these have not been normal times. But uh, please let us know about those service um, opportunities that you've taken advantage of that you were able to. Um, so another... Another question is, um, can students apply to other medical schools after their initial three years if they want to? Uh, no. And that's why um, my understanding is uh, that's why you do not take the MCAT because other medical schools will require that you take the MCAT. Um, if you want to keep your options open, this is not the program for you. This is a program for students who've decided that GW is the best place for their undergraduate experience and the GW Medical School is the best place for their medical education. Um, so if you do take the official MCAT, you will be dismissed from the program if you're part of it. And um, go ahead. Um, Lee, do you feel like there's something, there's, there are things about the GW BAMD program that are unique or set GW apart from other BAMD or accelerated med programs that um, students might be applying to? Well, everything that's unique about our institution. So I really encourage um, the students uh, that are present, if you have not already done an in, a general info session about GW, that's another good place to start. Um, we're not offering any se sessions on campus uh, these couple of days because we're busy giving orientation to all of our new students who just arrived and we're really excited about that. But it's all the things that make GW distinctive, our incredible history, our incredible location, right? Um, one of the other things that I haven't mentioned is that all GW students, particularly those that are uh, want to be on the pre-med track, and there are so many more students that come to GW for pre-med that are not selected as part of this program. Um, they um, tend to be students who really want to be in an urban environment. They want to participate in the service offered. They, they want to be in this exciting location. Um, and I think this is actually a good time to give Yusuf um, a few minutes to talk about his experience. And um, there are a couple of questions I, I would really hope you could address. Um, one is, um, you were selected for this program, so you're a success story. Um, what were some of the um, high school opportunities that you took advantage of in the medical profession that helped your application stand out in your mind? And um, secondly, what are some of the special opportunities you had because you were at GW and in Washington, D.C.? Sounds good. So um, first question, um, sorry, what was the first question again? It was about your high school experience. Yeah, I know yeah. it was a long time ago. I know. Um, <laughs> so in high school, I think the things that helped me the most were, as Lee mentioned, the service-related activities. Um, the first being um, I demonstrated a long-term interest in helping 
my local community, um, which was serving in an outpatient underprivileged clinic. Um, so that included me taking vitals, triaging patients, things like that. Um, another experience was helping out with the homeless. And that continued to when I was an undergrad at GW, because one of the programs that the, our dean really likes and the med school really likes is Miriam's Kitchen. Um, it's a nonprofit soup kitchen based right on campus. And it's a great way to give back to the community, to assist the local community. Um, so that was something I did in undergrad as well. And another thing I did in undergrad or in high school was um, research. So with that, I, I personally feel that GW allows for a, becoming a physician who's both research oriented, but then also um, clinically oriented. And so I saw that fulfilled when I came to GW, even as an undergrad, because you're able to get opportunities within labs within an instant because you're in the program. Um, and it's a direct link. Um, a lot of the professors in the med school are willing to give you opportunities because of that. You can set up a meeting with them, meet with them within that week and begin doing research in their lab. So I've been able to do that at both GW Med School um, as well as Children's National, which is the children's component of, or which is where the children's component of GW Hospital is based. So I was able to work in an undergraduate or in a um, plastic surgery lab as an undergrad at Children's because of the being a member in the program. Uh, is there anything else? I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but yeah. one key thing to know is that our medical school is on our Foggy Bottom campus. So it's on the same campus. We have two campuses. Again, to learn more about that, go to a general information session. Um, but we, um, our Foggy Bottom campus is our main campus. The medical school's right there. Uh, there are medical offices right there. Um, and until I began coordinating this program for GW, I had no real interaction with the medical school except as a patient. And I was so thankful they were there because they helped me with a really bad situation once. But um, as a GW student, whether you're in this program or not, you have almost a daily opportunity to interact with medical professionals. And this is an example I love to give. The, uh, one of the last times I was on campus, getting one of those great slices of pizza in the uh, bottom floor of District Commons. The man standing next to me was in scrubs. You know, could have been a doctor that had just come out of surgery or, or something, but you know, you will have opportunities to interact with lots of medical professionals if you come to GW, whether you're in the BAMD program or not. So Yusef, um, anything else you wanna add that, before I cut you off? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so one thing I wanted to add, I saw a question here about, do the students in the BAMD program take classes together or live together? Um, so I think this is a kind of a misnomer about these programs, especially the GW one and one that I had coming in, is that you will stick together with your GW cohort throughout the whole thing. And it's gonna be like U10 throughout all the classes throughout undergrad and med school, but that's completely not true. You are a regular undergrad, you are immersed within all your classes with people from all over different backgrounds. And for me, that really um, provided a, like a diverse experience because I was able to meet people from all over with different professions and, or different interests. And it got me interested in different things as well. So I was able to minor in religion, um, take classes in creative writing, take classes in literature. Um, actually the mi minority of my classes were pre-med classes. And that's one of the main things that I loved about being an undergrad in the program is it lets you do things that aren't just medicine related. Um, even though you are aiming to become a physician, you want to be a well-rounded physician. You want to be an interesting physician. So to do that, you have the opportunity to take different classes, to meet different people. And that's one of the main uh, benefits and perks of the program. So Yusuf, can you share... Um... What was your favorite class um, as an undergraduate at GW? So uh, that was quick, uh, easy, is biocancer. Um, that was an awesome class because the teacher is, the professor is a, um, I think the director of cancer research, one of the director of cancer research at the NIH. And so just there, like in, in that example, you are able to go up to the professor, get interested in his research, 
and get to know him really well. And then I know I had a couple of friends who started working in his lab right after class. So there's a lot of opportunities like that. Um, the reason why that class specifically was my favorite was because he was so knowledgeable as a professor, but also um, the way he taught the class was each class was a story. You sat down, there were no lecture notes, no PowerPoint, and he just taught you for two hours. And it was once a week um, and it was from like seven to 9 p.m. So you came out of that class exhausted, but you felt like you learned more about the human body. So it was awesome. Thank you so much. I want to address a little more that question because I understand where it came from. The initial question about do all the students yeah. live together. At, at GW, we do have seven programs that have what we call living and learning communities um, where you take a class with a group of students and you live with those students. This is not one of those programs. And that's also part of why we took it out to provide a separate session about it. Um, we have some other special programs that also don't have living components. This one does not have a living component. You will, you may, you will certainly end up connecting with the other BAMD students because you're a very small cohort, um, uniquely going through a similar experience with similar interests, but you won't necessarily be living on the same floor and definitely won't be for your first year. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. Another thing I wanted to mention is that many of the students who are successful applicants in this program speak other languages as well as being, you know, superstar academic students overall and great science students um, interested in research and people. Um, and so be sure if you speak other languages that you list them on your common app. Um, I'd even go so far as if you can as a senior, if you're in a foreign language and you haven't taken it to the highest level at your school that you think about um, continuing that because uh, that is something that kind of sets apart uh, some of the applicants as well, is that they do um, honor foreign language and understand that as doctors, you need to communicate with a variety of people. And the more languages a group of doctors speaks, the better service they can sometimes provide. Hey, Lee, we, we still have quite a bit of questions, so I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire, throw some out there. Um, Will, if students don't get into the BAMD program, will they still be considered for regular admission? Absolutely. And that's why I started with most pre-med students who come to GW will not be able to get this program because it's really limited to a small number of very special uh, people. Um, so we really want you, when you so hit submit, even though we're telling you, you have to submit by November 15th, always keep in mind that you're applying to GW. It is much easier for us to admit students to GW than to this particular program. So most of the students that apply to this program uh, may well be admissible to GW, but won't be selected for this program. Um, so it's really important uh, that you understand that. And Lee, about, can you um, just give a roundabout um, number uh, of how many students are accepted for the BAMD program per year? Okay, this is, this is where the news gets tough. So hunker down, right? Um, because in a typical year, we'll uh, receive about a thousand applicants for this program. Last year was atypical because we were test optional and we got 1,100 applicants for this program. Uh, last year, we invited 22 students to interview. We admitted 15 students. And um, so those odds are pretty tough, uh, which is why I, I don't want to discourage anyone from trying to apply to this program. But when you approach the application, you need to approach it very seriously, understanding that you need to tell us everything that's pertinent about you that might help you be admitted. Um, and then there's another chance if you are admitted to GW, but not admitted to BAMD, uh, GW sophomores have another chance uh, to apply for provisional acceptance to the GW medical school. That process is called early selection. Uh, when you're applying to come in as a first year, you're competing against you know, some of the top students from all over the country. And if you apply for that early selection program, you're only competing with other GW students. So while they're both very selective, it's not the one and only opportunity for provisional, provisional acceptance. Um, and we 
Um, a, we've had a couple of questions about this that is just could be really short, so I'll just answer it really quickly. Um, there's been a couple students who have said, are there any in-state versus out-of-state requirements? GW is a private school, and also DC is um, not a state, and so um, there are no like in-state versus out-of-state requirements. Every student, no matter where you're applying from, is treated the same. Um, so another question that we have is, um, does GW offer special counselors for students that are participating in the, in the BAMD program? I assume you mean academic counselors? Um, or maybe like advisors, like are there specific G uh, BAMD advisors that help students through the program and figure out how to complete their degree within three years? Yusuf, do you want to answer, answer that, please? Sure. Um, so being in the program, you are obviously a pre-medical student. So you will have access to the, and will be in direct communication with the pre-med advisors um, for the normal undergraduate class. But in addition to that, um, like Lee had mentioned earlier, Dean McQuail, the director of our program, is very receptive to addressing any concerns you may have and is a mentor that's very um, approachable. For example, for me, I wanted to take a class over the summer um, because I, it wasn't fitting into my schedule. And so I was able to schedule a meeting with her and was able to do that. So very easy. Great, thanks so much. Let's see what else we have. Um, um, if we couldn't participate in service or shadowing opportunities because of COVID, how will that affect the application and how can you kind of talk about that on your application? Well, if, if we get a thousand applicants and nobody had those, any opportunities, um, <laughs> then we're going to have to take that into account. We, we found in this, in the um, selecting the class that um, is entering this year, uh, we found people who found some really interesting ways around it in terms of the kinds of work they did. Um, I know one student developed a medical application because he had some interest in uh, computer science as well as medicine um, to help in his community. So um, there are some folks who have found ways around the unique circumstances we've been in. Um, of course, first we have to see what our applicant pool looks like. Um, but it's really important that you have a very mature understanding of medicine and pathology and death um, to some extent, because medicine is part of helping people um, who are uh, losing their lives as well. Um, so there are many ways to pursue that. Some students have done things like volunteer work in a, in a hospice center or a nursing home. Um, we've had some students apply that have, in their last year in high school, have become EMTs while they're still in high school. So um, there are some unique ways that people pursue this, um, even if some of the traditional things may have not been available in the pandemic. But certainly we have to go with what the applicant pool has told us was possible. Um, and we know that can vary state to state in, in, in this kind of a situation. But um, again, that, that's really why I, I encourage everybody who wants to be a doctor in the United States to become a doctor. We need you to be in medicine. But that doesn't mean that everybody's going to get this kind of a golden ticket to accelerate into medical school. Um, so please always keep that in mind when you're looking at these programs that um, the, the odds tend to be a little tough and we're looking for the truly the people that stand out whatever the circumstance. We also have a question about whether you can apply early decision to GW and also apply to the BAMD. No, absolutely not. You must apply regular decision. Um, and so I've known some students who decided against the program because they do know they want to come to GW and they do want to apply early decision. Um, and, but you must apply regular decision because the um, early decision applicants have to find out about their admission to GW earlier than we are ready to release decisions for the BAMD program. So it must be a regular decision application. 
There was also a question about um, kind of outcomes for the GW School of Medicine. I'm not sure if we know this, um, but how well did GW School of Medicine um, graduates place into residency programs? I don't know the answer to that. Yusuf, do you? They match at really good places. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can go to GW match list and then put the year 2021, 2020 for the med school and you can find a list of the specialties as well as um, where they match. So that's a student who's worrying about what's gonna happen in seven or eight years. <laughs> and I wanna, you know, first I wanna counsel you to calm it down a little bit. You can't plan your entire life right now, but I also wanna commend you because those also tend to be the kinds of students that have thought well ahead in their schooling and have taken all the advanced science and math courses that are gonna help them stand out. Um, in this application process, but, um, you know, try to take it one year at a time, particularly this year, because um, you have some really big decisions to make about where you'll spend the next three or four years of your life before medical school. All right, I think that that's all we have. Okay. Um, Yusuf, if you can also answer a question for me. Um, why did you choose to come to GW? Because uh, some of the students that are offered this program still don't choose GW. But what were some of the key factors that led you to find GW as the best place to prepare to be a doctor? So I think you kind of um, hinted at it when you mentioned the difference between GW's program and the other programs. But I truly love DC. Um, there's so much to do. Um, GW also has a particular emphasis on public health and service, um, which was interesting to me. In addition, there's the ability to be active on Capitol Hill. It's not something too difficult to do. There's so many people doing it. And so you can have an effect um, on the policy side of things as well as in the hospital. Um, so that kind of multifaceted approach really was appealing to me. Um, I think those are the, uh, that was the main thing, DC being the way it is. Yeah. Another thing, actually, um, and I think this would be appealing to prospective applicants, is that the GW cohort for the program is very close-knit, and we're almost like a family, because the elder, the, the seniors or the bigs will pass down notes to the younger kids in the programs, or they'll give them previous exams or they'll help them study, give them certain techniques, or tell them which professors to take, which ones to avoid. Um, so that really helped me staying on my toes during undergrad and not tripping. So, um, and then even establishing like a core group of people you can rely on from the start because there's no sense of competitiveness whatsoever between the group. You all have the same goal and you're all in it together. Somebody else asked, um, how do I know if the major I choose coming in is the right one? You'll have plenty of time to decide that. Um, if you're admitted to the BAMD program, you're going to be given lots of advice uh, by our pre-health advisors, by folks in the medical school admission office. They're not going to set you up to fail. They're going to make sure you can be successful in this endeavor. And it's certainly common for students to change their major their first year. Um, and they will make sure that you're on the path to graduate. You are not able to apply early decision to a GW if you're applying for the BAMD program. That's why we that's why we don't allow students to apply early decision because of the question that you asked. So if I get an early decision but don't get BAMD, then can I opt out? No. Um, so because we won't let you apply early decision. Um, any students who are thinking of applying early decision, this works really well for many students at GW. Typically about a third of our class comes in early decision. And that tends to happen because once people see our campus or see everything we have to offer, they just can't imagine wanting to be anywhere else. And those are the right reasons to apply early decision. If you decide to apply early decision, that means you're not applying to BAMD. Um, and it means that when you hit submit, you're committing to attending GW uh, if you're admitted. So it's a really serious commitment to make. 
Many of our majors offer both a BA and a BS. Um, and I believe that's generally true in the Columbian College. There may be some um, aberrations to that, but um, exceptions to that. Um, but uh, again, if, if you're admitted into this program, you're going to be given all the advice you need once you're on campus. It's a very small cohort of students that come into this program. This year, we had eight entering students in BAMB. And I'm super excited because um, some of them came from my region. And um, I know I, I am so impressed uh, uh, with the credentials that these folks have provided, even as seniors in a pandemic year. And um, we encourage you to give it serious consideration. First and foremost, please keep in mind, you do not have to be a BAMD student to be in pre-med and get a phenomenal medical education at GW. It's just one unique path for some very unique and exceptionally well-qualified students. Yusuf, any final words to these future doctors about what they need to do in the, in the coming years? Um, I think what you said is, is perfect, that this is just one way to get there. There are many different ways. Most people don't take this way, but if you're truly passionate about medicine, follow it. And it, you're not going to be penalized in our application process because you tried for BAMD. Like I mentioned, the majority of the students who apply to BAMD are going to be admitted to GW. I mean, it's not a guarantee by far. But if you've been an exceptional student in high school um, and, you know, GW is, is going to be an option, um, one of the unique things, again, BAMD applicants must submit test scores. Most of our applicants are not required to do that. And so if you think test scores are going to prohibit you, then you might reconsider and, and just apply to GW. Um, but it's an incredible opportunity, not the only opportunity that we provide. And um, again, I'm really impressed that you took the time um, to come early. I know a couple of you are even juniors already thinking about this. Um, live your fullest life as a senior. Live your best life as a senior. Um, don't let yourself be disappointed if you're not selected for one of these premier programs. Keep in focus the final goal that you want to be a doctor and contribute to our country in that way. And um, you will find ways to be successful. This is just one route. Caitlin, anything else that you want to share? Or um, There was just one last um, question that I think that would be helpful to um, clarify. And someone asked, um, so you should be choosing a major that's B, a BA major on the Common App. And I would say it actually doesn't necessarily matter the major you choose. The most important thing for you to choose during the application is just Columbian College, Columbian College, Columbian College. Just choose that as your primary. Um, the major you select on the Common App, whether you're applying to BAMD or not, um, doesn't really matter. It's You're just telling us what your major is planning to be. We're not actually using your major as any sort of, we're not holding you to that. So just choose Colombian and choose whatever major you might be interested in um, because the, the actual major that you indicate doesn't, um, doesn't necessarily mean anything to us while we're reviewing your application. Okay, I see another question coming in. The Common App isn't letting me submit a resume. I believe it does at a certain area of the Common App, but if you want, if you want to submit something that you cannot do on the Common App, you can also send documents to gwadm at gwu.edu, and we can add them to your file. It's easiest for us if you submit those documents, those extra documents that are required to complete your application. After you've already been given what we call a GWID, your GWID number, because then that makes sure that you are the person and we're matching it to your record. Because sometimes you may think you're the only person with your name in the world, but there may be 10 of you. And um, some, of, <laughs> some of the others might be applying to GW as well. So um, if you submit those additional documents, once you have your GWID, it's easier for us to get them in your file quickly. All right.
Again, thank you for coming. Yusuf, thank you so much. I have been so impressed with how our current BAMD students have helped support our information sessions um, because they really were clearly service-oriented people. I'm sure there was another way you could have spent this hour of your time and we can't thank you enough for helping us and helping these high school students who also want to be doctors, um, who someday you may meet <laughs> um, in a future hospital, and they will tell you that they came through the BAMD program three years after you. So thank you all so much. Caitlin, thanks a million for your work in the background. And uh, we look forward to reading your applications and wish you a truly wonderful senior year, wherever you're in high school. Bye-bye. <laughs>